Hey, let's come in uh, Bonson Group CEO David Bonson and David Kaltbaum, Capital Management President and uh, Fox News contributor Gary Kaltbaum. David, let me begin with you. Obviously, what Mr. Powell had to say, the market seemed to love. Uh, up 600 points now. Well, I think the key is that balance sheet comment, and, mm. and it's something we've been talking about since the last Fed meeting, that the rate hike issue is not nearly as important because of the state of credit markets. We have so much reflation that has taken place in the corporate economy. There's so much new leverage that's put on. I don't think it's excessive, but credit conditions have deteriorated to some degree. Mm. There's a little less credit quality out there. And so any kind of extraction of liquidity from the economy could become very problematic. And for them to sort of talk down that issue on balance sheet reduction is a big deal because the market wants to believe the dollar liquidity is going to be there for the economy to do what it's otherwise organically doing. David, so what does this do for the markets going forward? Uh, OK, so the Fed's basically saying, hey, to Gary's point, we got your back. Um, we've got Chinese talks, uh, trade talks going on next week in Beijing. Could this help stabilize the market? Yeah, I think I think so. You know, the issue with the China deal cannot be ignored. It's a big factor that looms because I think a lot of us just take for granted that China has to make a deal because things have gotten so bad there. And I really believe more and more that the U.S. needs to make a deal. That They just simply cannot let this go further, put us into recession the year before a presidential election. But there are other circumstances that we just don't know. We're not sure how ready the Chinese authorities are to push this thing out. My belief is that we're going to get a deal, at least cosmetically, and very likely substantively. And will, the market will respond well to it. But I can't bet on that 100% conviction. So it puts you in a difficult position as an asset allocator because there really is sort of some mm. uncertainty around that. And that uncertainty is where we get this volatility from. So when you look at the Fed issue and the China issue, and the fact of the matter is, I happen to agree with Gary. Uh, mm. Jay Powell has done a much better job at hiding his inner Bernanke than Janet Yellen <laughs> did. But ever since the 98 Greenspan put, I believe that the, all of these Fed governors ultimately look to the stock market. Mm. And, and you have to admit, Gary, Chairman Powell did a better job of hiding that over the last 6 to 12 months. But I think that ultimately they're looking to risk assets as a signal and saying, OK, we, we surrender. The fact of the matter is, I don't necessarily mind if they keep raising rates one or two times in 2019. But the balance sheet issue is the problem because they let corporate America relever so much yeah. that if they go pull away that punch bowl now, the hangover is too severe for the economy. David, has the Federal Reserve boxed itself into a corner with rate hikes? Well, I, I think so. And I want to I point out about 98, a very interesting similarity to where we are now is, is that in 98, Greenspan was cutting. And yes, there had been the Russian devaluation and there was long-term capital. We had some disruptions that lasted one quarter. The market dropped 19.8%. Sound familiar? Yeah. Yet unemployment was very low. GDP growth was off the charts good. We were in the technology boom. So actually, all the economic circumstances were really favorable, and yet they were accelerating a dovishness all because of risk assets. And here we are now, good GDP growth relative to where it's been, very low unemployment, but what's the one thing that has them concerned, as Gary pointed out? It's risk and asset. David, let me get back to you then. Same question I asked Gary earlier as we listened to the Fed uh, talk about this policy. Jay Powell saying, well, maybe we are going to be more accommodated if we are more nimble, able to adjust. Uh, um, what does that do from an investor's point of view? Uh, Gary says, well, maybe he has to change his stance a little bit. If, if the Fed are going to take this tact. Will you, has your outlook changed a little bit? My, my view is this. The uh, fundamentals of the economy are strong, and that doesn't mean that risk assets are not going to continue to be volatile. I mean, one of the problems with Gary being right about the fact that the <laughs> Fed should not be there bailing mm. out risk assets is that they are there bailing out risk assets. And it makes it difficult for us to position a portfolio based on what we think ought to be the case versus mm. what is. And I think Gary agrees with that. Right now, though, from my vantage point, I just want to play the rotation from growth to value. There's still very solid fundamentals. 
uh, that can be bought at a great valuation in the U.S. stock market, but I can't buy the whole index and I can't buy FANG to get that. And so that's where I think a lot of investors are hung up is they're still trying to find a way back into last year's trades and the year before's trades. And the fact of the matter is those companies are still very expensive. So if you want to play a little bit of defense but still be positioned for positive returns, I say it all the time, so I apologize for beating the dead horse, but dividend growth stocks are the way to be right now. They're showing you that their free cash flow is still growing. They're more defensive. They have strong balance sheets. So there's going to still be volatility around the trade war and around the Fed. And yet there are companies that have gotten very cheap over the last two months. David, Gary was making the point there is no leadership in this market right now. We had the, the big tech companies led for so long. We don't have that there now. We were told that the financials were going to be the next big leader in a, in a higher interest rate environment. That hasn't worked out. Where is the leadership coming in the markets? Well, we also were told we were in a higher interest rate environment. That hasn't quite played either. You notice last year the bond market was down for 11 months and all of a sudden ended the year in a positive return uh, because of uh, how yields dropped so much in December. I actually think that there is a leadership area right now, and it's the whole value space. You Mm. look at the growth outperformance over value, and it's this huge straight line up for the last nine years with a little interruption in 2016. All of a sudden now, that chart of value outperforming growth is V'd up. And and I really think that's what you're going to see throughout 2019 for the same reason that you have the kind of Fed uh, lightening the load a bit. They're not going to go forward with all the tightening that we thought might be there. And the fact of the matter is that there's still good organic earnings growth. I don't want investors to believe that the entire fate of their portfolio revolves around the Federal Reserve. It isn't true. You need positive earnings growth. Apple did not drop this week because the Fed is tightening. Apple dropped because they're having organic revenue creating problems in their own company. So you have to find the sectors and find the companies not doing that. That's what we're focused on doing. And I believe dividend growth gives you a great indication of where companies have a lot of confidence in their own outlooks, organically speaking.